There are three relevant moments you need to consider when building a predictive model. If you miss any of them, your model will fail. Join me on this video to understand what are these three key moments and how to choose them. Hi there, I'm Kelvin Fernandez, your AI advisor, and welcome to another AI shot. In this one, we will talk about future predictions and three times are relevant on these predictions. If you recall our video of what is a prediction, I will leave the link. We discussed that there are future predictions where we are forecasting events on the future, and there are present or past predictions, okay, where we are basically identifying something that already happened. But on this video, I will cover a use case and a specific problem of future predictions or forecasting. Okay, and this is relevant both when you are building the predictive model, but especially when you are collecting the data that will feed this model. Okay, so let's go to it. And basically, if you if you miss this this thing that I will talk about, you will be exposed to two three main problems. The first one is that you may uh, incur in data leakage, which is when you whisper to your model the answer. So basically, the model is like cheating, but it won't be able to perform well on practice. The other one is that you may be introducing some biases during training that won't be available on testing. And um, actually, on this problem, uh, we discuss uh, this issue on the video of dealing with delayed data. I will also leave the link uh, in the end. And um, the final, the final problem is that maybe you will be building a model that is not that, that you cannot put in practice or that, that you cannot change your business operations because you didn't realize what is the right timing okay so after we work on dozens of these projects of these machine learning projects we arrive to this uh, system to this pattern of three times for prediction and in the description you have a pdf where we systematize this this video okay and so you can talk it with your peers so let's talk about these three times okay the first time and it's the core time that you will have is the prediction time okay the prediction time so if we have on this axis here time the central time of any prediction is the prediction time when i am i doing this prediction like for example i'm doing uh, this prediction is executed every time the client arrives this prediction is executed on the first day of each month this prediction is executed every time a user asks for help okay so what is the trigger that generates this prediction and everything will on my modeling will be placed will be defined with respect to this central time okay the prediction time then again we are talking about future predictions so i need to know what is the what i call the prediction window okay the prediction window what is the prediction window the prediction window is what is the time interval that i am expecting to forecast for example how is going to be the weather tomorrow? Or how is going to be the weather next month? Or is this client leaving the company in the next quarter? Or what is the, you know, like, is this client buying a subscription in the next seven days? So is this period, this period where I'm willing to, that I'm willing to wait to observe the prediction, okay? And this is super critical because it basically limits the period where we will try to observe the pattern, okay? And this will, will define basically how we are going to action, how are we going to collect the data, what is, what are the positive and the negative cases, what is the... So it basically defines our predictive target, okay? And it has to be aligned with the actions that we will execute. And the third time, and people tend to ignore this time, a lot of time, you, you will get crazy if you, if you realize how many projects out there do not consider this time, is what I call the data observability time. And again, this is linked with our video on dealing with delay data. What is this data observability? Let's say I'm running a prediction today. If I'm running a prediction today, maybe I do not have full observability. I don't have already all the data integrated from the last minute. Maybe my data integration pipeline takes a month or takes only runs once a week. So I only have data up to last Monday or it, I only have data up to the end of the last month. So data integration plays a huge role here. Actually, this data observability is not a single time point. It's a time point per data source. So if your model is relying on two or three data sources, what is the latency on the integration of this data into my pipeline? So I know that when I'm running a prediction for a certain trigger, I'm not considering the data that was already integrated after that period of being blind, you know, between each integration pattern during training, because then I will bias my prediction. And like we talk about this on the dealing with delay data uh, video. So be always aware of what is the data integration schedule on your specific infrastructure. 
so you can basically simulate this time with respect to the central prediction time so i'm predicting the let's say let's say the trigger is a customer support contact okay so that is a central time and i am predicting if the if this support contact will create will escalate for example to a lawsuit and to a lawsuit on the next two weeks for example okay then i need to know what is the latest data that was integrated for this client on a live environment not on my historical data but on the live setup let's say that for each customer i only know their payments uh, on a monthly basis delay okay so you need to simulate this delay on the data okay so we have these two gaps here okay i will say the gap between the prediction time and the prediction window and the gap between the data observability and the prediction time what is our goal and why we want to discuss these three signs with you and why you should discuss it with your client with your business stakeholder because your goal is to shorten these two times okay why because if i am capable of shortening this gap here okay if i'm able to make predictions not for the next month but to the next week and still being able to make actionable decisions out of it i will expect to have a, a more accurate model because as we discussed on our previous video on prediction windows versus actionability we are better at predicting short-term events than long-term ones so talk with your business stakeholder and ask him what is the shortest time where i can run a prediction and you still you still can make this okay like relevant actions with that prediction win okay so you will need to shorten this time the other one and, and this is more of a let's say business question because you need to understand how the business processes will the will trigger after your prediction will be executed after your prediction and the other one is the data observability prediction time and you need to understand how to shorten this because the longer this window is the more uncertainties you will accumulate okay the more gaps you will have in your data so this is more of a technical plan here so on this side you will face you know problems about how you can have a better infrastructure a better pipeline so you can consolidate your data faster removing these hidden moments these gaps in your data okay so this is basically your goal uh, again this is your goal shortening the gaps on one side more a business question on the other side more of a technical question try to shorten them as as much as possible as long as you don't lose actionability and as long as you can execute it without any latency risk or any you know major production risk because of it, you required a very short time for, for, for prediction if you like this video you already know like subscribe and activate your notifications hope to see you soon bye bye